So hello everyone and welcome uh, to District 3 and this exciting event and networking session we have for you today around alternative proteins and of course the X-Prize with the next billion competition. Uh, my name is Anna Fernandez. Uh, I'm a scientist who joined District 3 about two years ago to help scientists uh, and scientific entrepreneurs such as yourself bring your science out of the lab. Today, we're happy to have so many scientists uh, like yourself who are looking for teams. So please use this opportunity to connect with each other and future teammates. At 12, we're going to have uh, breakout sessions and a networking session. So make sure to, to stay in and, and use those, please. Uh, so before we, we start, uh, just a quick note about the flow and the agenda. So we will start with a short introduction about this retreat and the support we are offering to expert teams. It's going to be followed by a presentation and Q&A uh, with Jordan Gialli from uh, Express, who's joining us from LA. He'll be telling you about the Express competition and then we'll have the chance to ask him uh, questions. This is going to be followed by a bio talk and a sort of panel discussion with uh, Armin Khan, who's the uh, co-founder of Cellular Agriculture Canada, and Bill Gruhl, who's the CEO of uh, Protein Industries Canada. Uh, the discussion will be moderated by Andy Manel uh, from District 3. And after this uh, discussion and Q&A, then we'll move for the, for the networking. So please feel free to start introducing yourself in the chat and type any questions you have. The chat will be your main uh, medium of communication. So if you're already looking for a team, you know what type of profile, you're welcome to do that. So you, so you can start uh, talking with each other already. So for those of you that are, that are not familiar with District 3, uh, I'll tell you a bit about, about us. We've been around since uh, 2014. Uh, always uh, believing in advancing an open collaborative ecosystem that enables entrepreneurs to thrive and succeed. We represent a diversity of cultures, backgrounds, and ideas, always fostering innovation with a global mindset, as you see from, from, our, from our global partners. And you can also see from the impact summary displayed our wide range of, of um, diversity cultures, as well as uh, uh, startups that we have uh, worked with in the past. At this structure, we work with scientific entrepreneurs from idea uh, to impact through different programs. Either we start early on helping them frame and validate uh, the startup idea, all the way to helping them succeed in growing a startup and raising funds. So depending on when you are in your express team, we will be able to support you through this journey at, at different uh, stages. And overall, uh, just a bit of, of background, about 30% of the startups we work with at this retreat are in the, in the life sciences field. So some of you may recognize uh, these names, but they cover a wide range of sectors uh, from biotech, biopharma uh, to ag tech. Now, of course, we're also interested in, in the food uh, sector. And we have learned with working with so many different uh, life sciences startups, two things. Uh, first, that uh, or most successful startups are science-based. And secondly, that scientific entrepreneurs uh, that are developing um, innovation startups in science need specific and specialized support. Um, this is how uh, the BioStream uh, was born, which is a dedicated team and resources at District 3 to support uh, funders that are leveraging biomanufacturing and bioengineering in different sectors such as biopharma, agri-food, clean technologies, and biomaterials. So this is uh, all includes you. Um, the specialized needs, so we were aware of the, of the needs of, of scientists uh, to create startups. And aware of that, we have recently inaugurated a molecular biology laboratory at the Loyola campus of Concordia University, which is a state-of-the-art uh, laboratory research for district two entrepreneurs and what we want to do with this space is really to provide the tools and equipment as scientists need to develop uh, products based on their, on their scientific ideas. We additionally uh, offer access to Concordia's Genome Foundry, which is a facility that it's uh, the only one of its kind in Canada and only one of 20 in the world. 
It's a facility that combines robotics with biology to enable scientists to do work at significant scales and speeds. So all this repetitive uh, process that comes uh, in molecular biology laboratory, uh, such as DNA assembly can be um, automatized uh, at the foundry. And we do not only have the programs that I mentioned, the lab space, but we also have a strong uh, network of partners to support you along your journey. This includes, of course, uh, the XPRIZE uh, team, which with, with which we have a very successful history of, of collaboration. Just to give you a bit of background, it's not the first time that, that we're partnering and working with XPRIZE. So back in 2016, uh, we were the incubator to submit the highest number of teams to the artificial intelligence uh, IBM Watson competition. Uh, we're very proud of those uh, teams, Canadian teams, uh, that uh, three of them made it to the top 10. And one of them has, has continued to thrive and is now in the top three. So it's the only Canadian team remaining in this competition. This competition hasn't finished and we will know on June 23rd, so very soon, uh, if this team, which is called AFRED uh, Health, uh, will win the final round and $15 million. So very exciting and good luck to all the team at um, AFRED. Uh, AFRED is a very interesting example as they form around the XPRIZE challenge. So for those of you that are, are looking to form a team and, 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 and develop an idea, I hope this is really a motivational story. We were supporting AFRED uh, from, from the very beginning at every step of the way, and we hope to do the same, uh, same with your team. And without further ado, I'll pass the word uh, to Jordan Gialli, uh, who will uh, tell, be telling you about the Express competition. Jordan is the community lead on uh, Express Street the Next Billion. He manages uh, the competition teams, partners, as well as the ecosystem. Thank you so much, Jordan, for joining us today, and I'll pass it over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Anna, and thank you, everyone, for joining. I'm going to be sharing my screen right now to show a little presentation, so if you'll just give me one moment. Can you see my screen? I think, yes. Okay. Um, so just a short agenda today. I'm going to give you a quick introduction on XPRIZE and then the competition. Um, and then I'll take any questions at the end, um, if there's time, I think. So um, what is XPRIZE? Well, we are a nonprofit foundation based in Los Angeles, California. That's where I'm currently located. Um, and we focus on designing and operating prize competitions, mainly around science and technology um, challenges. So we are focused on solving the world's greatest um, problems, basically. Um, and we work in a variety of different domains. We work in space. Um, ocean mapping. Um, most recently, the COVID-19 pandemic, we did some um, work around that um, with, with rapid testing and so forth. And then, um, of course, Be the Next Billion, which I'll talk about momentarily. Um, real quickly, if you're wondering how we kind of got started, we were inspired, our founder was inspired by um, Charles Lindbergh, who was the first person to successfully fly across um, from New York to Paris. There was a a small, well, not at that time, actually, $25,000 was a lot of money then, but um, he won the first kind of um, competition that we are inspired by and model our work after. Um, our very first prize was the $10 million Ansari Prize, which um, was around reducing the cost and risk of brown space travel. And the winner of that competition actually developed the technology that went on to become Virgin Galactic, which is a huge company now. I'm sure many of you um, are aware of that company, um, and we're very proud of that. So to date, um, we've been around for about 25 years. Um, we've raised nearly $300 million in, in prize awards, and we've given out nearly $80 million worth of that um, prize purse across 15 different competitions. And then currently, we have nine competitions um, that are actively in operation. Um, and one of those is what I spend my time working on, which is XPRIZE Feed the Next Billion. And this was a prize that was designed um, to solve um, the biggest challenges around um, the environmental degradation that our current food system has, um, including um, human health and uh, nutrition. And then we're also focused on, with this prize, um, uh, animal welfare, too. 
So um, all competitions have uh, sponsors and benefactors that we, we um, just couldn't operate the competitions without. And we're very thankful for these. Um, for this competition, for Feed the Next Billion, we have really three sponsors. Um, one of them, which is not listed here, has decided to remain anonymous at this time. Um, but we're, we're still very thankful to them for their support. Our title sponsor is Aspire, which is the research arm of the Abu Dhabi government. Um, and then our benefactor is the Tony Robbins Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization based here in the U.S. as well. Um, of course, we have our wonderful partners, of which D3 is um, an amazing partner. We're very, very grateful for their support. Um, they've done an amazing job um, helping us so far with recruiting all of you amazing Canadian teams, um, or potential teams, rather. And um, we're very thankful for that as well. We also have currently um, the Good Food Institute the Foundation for Food and Agricultural Research, which is FAR, um, New Harvest, and then Pro Veg International, which is based in Europe. Um, this is a list that will continue to grow as we recruit more and more partners. It's a crucial part of any XPRIZE competition to get um, partners to help the teams um, do a variety of things and become successful in the competition. And I can talk more about that um, later on. So this competition is primarily about developing alternative and structured um, protein products. And um, we're really focused on chicken cutlets or fish filet alternatives. So um, in order to win the competition, the teams will have to develop um, a viable product that, that meets those criteria along with um, different sensory properties and versatility and cookability. So we wanna make sure that it can go in a variety of different dishes. Um, the nutritional profiles is obviously very crucial. So we wanted to make sure that, um, that uh, the nutrition of these, these cutlets and fillets meet um, what's on the market currently for traditional products or conventional products. Um, and then of course, we're also, in, in, um, we're also uh, scoring the teams on environmental footprint, which is, um, I can talk about that later as well. There is a bonus prize, which you'll see at the end there, that second paragraph. And this is focused mainly on um, the teams that can, or one team rather, that can develop um, a growth medium at the lowest production cost. So I'm sure all of you are in the space and you're well aware that um, this is a, a huge hurdle currently in the industry to, to get the cost of the growth medium down. And that's why we set aside um, this prize award for that. I'll quickly go over the structure of the competition. This is a high level overview of the, of the timeline so far. In the bottom left, um, this is kind of where we're at now, if you can see my mouse. Um, we're, we're quickly approaching the registration deadline, but um, don't worry if you haven't applied yet, there's still plenty of time. Um, the deadline is June 7th. This was recently extended from May 31st, in case you're wondering. Um, the new deadline is June 7th. We gave teams a little bit extra time to get their applications in because the the technical submission is a little bit lengthy, we realized. Um, but after that, this summer, we'll be selecting up to 30 semifinalist teams um, to advance as, uh, to the next round. They'll have about a year to develop their products or a prototype rather before there's a semifinalist judging phase. Um, after that, those up to 30 semifinalist teams will get down selected to 10 finalist teams. And then they'll have about another year and a half to develop uh, multiple prototypes, which will all kind of come together in that um, finalist judging phase where the winners will be selected. So um, these next few slides kind of take a deep dive into these different rounds um, to give you a little bit more information. So that first round, the technical submission round, we're calling it, um, this is where we're at now. The deadline to apply again is June 7th. Um, in this round, teams really only have to do a few things. They have to sign an agreement with XPRIZE, which is just kind of like a legal agreement. Um, they have to pay a registration fee, and then they have to submit that technical submission, which asks questions on like your team, your mission and vision, um, your business plan and so forth. But most importantly, we want to know about your solution design approach. And that's, that's it. basically questions around your technology and what's, what makes it innovative and unique and why you believe you will win the competition. Um, these, uh, these submissions will be reviewed by that judging panel again. This up to 30 semifinalist teams will split um, a small prize milestone award at this point of um, a half million dollars. So say there were 30 teams, they'll equally split that half million dollars. Um, from there, as I mentioned, the semifinalist judging round comes about a year later. 
Um, so this is slated for sometime next summer, summer 2022, um, the dates to be determined still. But um, at this point, teams will have to offer up their kind of first prototype versions to the judging panel. And they'll um, be scored on these criteria that you see on the screen. So the cutlets or the fillets will have to be about two ounces in weight. Um, we'll look at the nutrition profile, the cookability, et cetera. Um, teams will have an opportunity to update their data on the environment, excuse me, the environmental and um, economic evaluations. Um, and then, like I mentioned, those 30 teams will get down selected to the 10 finalists. Those 10 finalists will split another milestone award at this point of two and a half million dollars. And then, the finalist round is very similar um, criteria wise to the semi-finalist round. It does get a little bit more difficult though. You'll notice now um, it's up to four ounces in size for the, for the products. Um, these other criteria remain largely the same. However, um, they will be a little bit more stringent. The judging panel will be on, on scoring these um, metrics, environmental footprint and the economic evaluation. This will kind of be the final um, time for teams to, to finalize their data there. Um, and then um, at that point, the judging panel will select the top three winners and the bonus prize winner, which I believe is on the next slide here. Oh, actually, so this is just a, a table to compare the two rounds for you, because I think um, sometimes it can be confusing to look at one slide and then the next. So uh, the D3 team has these slides, and um, they're totally okay to send these out afterwards. But this is for your own kind of um, awareness of how these uh, criterias compare across the different rounds. Okay, this is the slide I was looking for. So this is the grand prize um, award uh, distribution. So this will be given out in the beginning of 2024. Um, and then the first place will win $7 million. Second place will win 2 million. Third place will win 1 million. And then that bonus prize that I mentioned earlier, that's a $2 million prize that um, a finalist team can win uh, if they meet the, the lowest production cost of the growth medium. And then hopefully by that time, we can all meet in person and we'll have a, an award ceremony like this in person. Um, hopefully COVID's over by then. Um, these last few slides, I wanted to throw in here because um, you may be wondering like who can compete in this competition and why I compete and so forth. So the answer to the first question, who can compete is um, really anyone. So that's kind of what we pride ourselves on at XPRIZE is that we open up our competitions to anyone to compete um, as long as you, you know, you have the, the know-how, you have the drive and so forth. Um, it's open to high school teams. You can be in college, you can be out of school and not never have gone to school. You can um, just be working out of your parents' garage, for example, and on your startup, you can be a fully fledged um, company. Um, it doesn't matter to us. We believe innovation comes from um, everywhere. So we really want all types of applications. As you can imagine, this is a very technically and scientifically um, heavy domain we're, we're operating in. So we do expect at least, you know, one team member to have uh, that technical knowledge and background to actually develop the products. Um, but that said, if you're not that tech person, that's okay. Um, we try to connect people across teams if they want to join forces, if they want to merge. Um, excuse me, if they want to merge and join another team, um, we try to facilitate that for you. So if you're not the tech person, have no fear, um, contact us and we can try to get you connected with a, with a team that does have the technical background. Um, so why compete? Um, this is a great question. And there are many reasons why you should compete, um, including having your technology verified. So, excuse me, my mouth's a little dry. Um, this is a great opportunity to have your technology tested by the judging panel, which are made up of uh, just top industry experts. They're all, you know, PhDs or they work in universities and so forth. They have the backgrounds in this technology, so they will take a great look at your technology, and um, you'll get you'll get kind of that um, verification from having gone through this rigorous judging process. There's also um, opportunities to raise funds. So if you if you're selected for an XPRIZE competition, it's a great kind of marketing tool for um, raising additional fund raising opportunities. And we do host workshops to help you with that. If you if this is new to you, we want to help you um, kind of tighten up your narrative and so forth. That's a benefit of being a team. 
Uh, there's the media exposure, of course. Um, there's all the great partnerships that we form, including D3. Um, but as we kind of advance in the competition, we'll have testing and scaling partners, well partners that help you kind of with the regulatory side and we'll advise you there. Um, and then post competition, we do have an alumni network and we help teams um, get to market and form um, partnerships that way. So we really wanna see you succeed as a team um, and we do our best to use our network to help you with that. Um, some things that, that's not listed on here, but that we hear all the time is um, just going through an exercise competition really adds to the team bonding aspect. So these are very um, rigorous, um, intense competitions. They take a lot of time, um, a lot of energy and so forth. So teams that go through um, oftentimes say that they came out on the other end, whether they won or not, um, a much closer team, which I think is a, is a benefit for sure. I think that may be all. Yes, thank you. Um, if you wanna contact me uh, and my team for further questions, after this event, um, feel free to shoot us an email at the support line. This is feedthenextbillion at xprize.org. I know it's a very long email. Um, I will drop this in the chat. And you can also reach me at kind of my personal work email. I'll drop that there too if you have any questions. But that's all for me from now. If um, we want to take questions or anything, I'm happy to do that. But I'm not sure exactly what's next. I'll stop sharing screen at this point, though. Well, thanks so much, uh, Jordan. Uh, so my name is Andy Manel. I am part of PC3 uh, innovation team. Um, also, I am coordinating uh, this the Xprize uh, in Canada. So as you know, uh, we are very proud uh, to sign an agreement with uh, Xprize to, to become a Canada Canadian ambassador for the for the competition. And we have some kind of uh, some some surprise for for you uh, thanks to to Xprize. So they give us the possibility to, to share with two teams from Canada, two free uh, registrations. As you know, the, the value of this registration is 1,500 uh, US dollars. So we, we are sharing here a, a link where you can submit to us your technical submission. And what we will do is the DC3 team will review your the proposal to, to X price and we will uh, announce uh, these two winners uh, around June 4th. As you know, the deadline to, for the registration to expire is June 7th. Um, I think now, uh, if, so if you have, I think we will have answered some questions from the, from the chat to, to Jordan and, and Anna about the C3. So Jordan, if you can join me. Yes, I'm happy to, Andy. Great. Great. So I have some questions for Jordan in the expert side and so for Anna uh, about uh, DC3 and the support for teams, etc. So first question. Uh, Juan Sebastian is asking, uh, are we able to join for user portion of the competition? So I think what he means is to join just for the first year. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it kind of depends. The short answer is no. Um, <laughs> if you want to compete, <laughs> you'll have to apply kind of before that June 7th deadline. However, um, one kind of workaround I think that could happen is you could join a team that makes it, that applies before the June 7th deadline. They get selected as a semifinalist team and so forth, and they move on in the competition. And then you could join that team later on. Um, that would be okay. But you couldn't, um, you couldn't apply later or, you know, before, and then kind of, you could drop out if you were to be accepted, but we would expect you to apply before the June 7th deadline, if you want to form your own team. Right. So I basically, small if you want to, to, if you want to participate in the X prize and you want to quit the, the competition one year, it's up to you. Um, yeah. I have a question for Anna. Uh, Anna, so DC3 is looking to support uh, teams participating in this X prize. Uh, so, but we are located on, in Montreal. There is a way to support other teams from outside of Montreal? Uh, yes, of course. So, uh, all, the, all the programs that we have uh, set up to help you, we are uh, giving them online currently and will continue to, to adapt to do so uh, once we go back to, 
for, to our offices, for sure. Uh, for the laboratory, it, it's potential as well to, to be open. Of course, this is a world where somebody has to be there uh, to, do, to do the job, but uh, we are currently working on a system so that one of the team members could be Montreal, one of the employees, the part of the team could be Montreal accessing the lab while the other part of the team is, let's say, in Vancouver. Um, additionally, for the use of the genome foundry, it's a bit more flexible since I was mentioning this is a fully automated machine. So there's the team member doesn't have to be there all the time. Uh, so we can definitely uh, coordinate and support you from even if you're located elsewhere. Yes. Great. So now a question to for uh, Jordan. Uh, can, can I, so uh, Jennifer from Better Mail is asking, can a team sign up just for a bo the bonus price? So just for the medium, uh, special price for the medium, uh, grown medium product? Great question. Um, again, the short answer is no. Um, you would have to apply to the competition in general, and then um, you would have to make it to the finalist round in order to qualify to win the bonus prize award. Right. I have another question around this system. So can those teams, uh, can those, uh, companies or startups can, can make partnership with some ex price teams and in that way to participate in the in the competition? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yes, so in other words, can they, can maybe like one team do the growth medium side and then another kind of team does the everything else? Um, yes, that's totally okay. We welcome teams joining forces and merging that way. Um, you would have to enter as one team technically but uh, you can kind of discuss that and make that decision between the two groups on how the arrangement would work, how you would split the prize award and so forth, and um, who would be the team leader and all that information. Um, you would have to figure that out, then apply as one team to the competition, and that's totally okay. Um, this is because, for example, we have the future fields from, from Canada. They announced like one week ago, uh, they have in the growth medium also, um, but they are using insects to create insects. this kind of growth medium. So as my understanding is that x is looking for a solution where there is no animal involved right. in the supply chain. So it's possible. So what is the, the level of acceptance uh, of flexibility uh, for yeah. this? Yeah, so can they use um, animal or insect protein in, in qualify the for the competition? Um, that is a great question. Um, I will have to get back to you on that because I'm not sure exactly. I wanna make sure I get the right information. I'll have to ask our science leads on if whether that qualifies or not, but that's a great question. Um, let me note that down and then I'll be sure to send the D3 team an email follow up for that. Right. I have two other questions. We are just short of time, but I think another important one. So uh, Rebecca is asking, Especially as a, a Canadian team, what is expected for the regulatory, regu regulatory step? So teams go to the FDA or our federal regulatory agency? In order, so I can just finish. It's kind of long, but it's to understand. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch all of it. Um, what, which question was it again? Sorry, Andy. So, so, so Rebecca is asking, especially as a Canadian team, what is expected? for the regulatory st steps. Should teams go through the PDA or our federal regulatory agency in order to consider a consumable and to right. submit our approach for each milestone? Right, yeah, so for the, for the regulatory um, frameworks, yes, um, that's a great question. So when you apply to the competition right now, um, we do ask a few questions on kind of what your um, understanding is of your uh, of the regulation in your region. So if you're a Canadian team, um, we would expect you to, you know, have a, an understanding of the Canadian regulatory laws around um, alternative protein at this time, if there are any, um, and then you would um, apply based on that information. However, we do understand that this is um, a very new space right now for everyone in the world, um, and the regulatory frameworks are lacking. So this is something we don't expect there to be too much detail on, and we actually intend to form partnerships around this and to help the teams um, get their, their heads around regulatory frameworks in the future. And this last question, Jordan, uh, because this is so around the insurance that teams need to have 
when they yeah. are applying. So right. they need to have this everything ready be, be, when they get the register or how this works. Right, that's a great question too. Um, so I think it's, I'll have to check the agreement, the legal document, but it's somewhere like 30 to 60 days after you've um, been accepted to the competition, you'll have to um, prove your insurance policies. Um, again, that's all in the legal document that you'd sign, but there is a, a specific time frame on that. And then that that's just something, you know, you send us a form that just certifies, hey, we're insured by this company and so forth. Um, but so once you kind of decide to enter the competition, that's when you'd need to get the insurance basically. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bye. thanks, thanks, Anna, for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, thanks to everyone. So now we will have we will have a conversation with a big view from Protein Juices Canada and Ahmed Khan from a Canada a Cellular Agriculture Canada. Uh, uh, Ame is the one of the co-founders of the Cellular Agriculture Canada. He has a long history in the, in the ecosystem of Canada. Also, uh, spoke, speaking in several countries about cellular agriculture, countries like Canada, England, Singapore, etc. And um, Bill uh, is the CEO of Protein Industry Canada. As you know, as you might know, uh, Protein Industry Canada is one of the super cluster that the government of uh, Canada. Uh, who dare to move forward uh, some kind of key industries uh, for the economic, the future of, of the economics uh, in Canada. So Bill, I mean, thanks so much to be here. If you want to add something else about yourself, please uh, introduce yourself. Let's start with you, I mean. uh, Hi everyone, thanks, thanks for inviting me Andy. It's great to be a part of this event looking at looking at how we can grow the future food ecosystem in Canada and get, and get more Canadians involved in the X Prize. Like Andy mentioned, I am one of the co-founders of Slow Agriculture Canada. We are a nonprofit inter interdisciplinary group that aims to raise awareness and advocate for the cell agriculture field across Canada, as well as being a, one of the co-founders of Slow Agriculture Canada, or CEC for short. I'm also involved as the founder of Cell Agri, a news platform looking at the field. It's good. Yeah, hi, hi, Andy. Thanks for thanks for having me on today. My my name is Bill Gruel. I'm CEO of Protein Industries Canada, which I'll talk about a little bit. But uh, personally, myself, I live and work in Regina, Saskatchewan, which is the heart of the prairies. This is a really, really exciting initiative for us. Uh, if I don't I don't know if your audience has ever been to the prairie region of Canada, but we're sitting on. Uh, you know, 70 million metric tons of crop production on an annual basis that that yields over 14 million metric tons of plant protein. So this concept of uh, utilizing that resource to feed the next billion people in a sustainable fashion is a really, really exciting uh, venture for us. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the conversation and where this X Prize goes. Great, thanks. So the reason why we, we are bringing uh, silver agriculture to Canada and protein to Canada the same state at the same time is because, as you know, the, this X Prize is looking uh, forward for the future of protein and how we can we feed the next next uh, ten billion people in, in the planet. Uh, and there is different approach, and we can say that cell based and plant based are one of the most kind of at, at the edge, right, uh, of all the potential co uh, solutions that we can see. So I think it would be a very interesting. Uh, conversation here. So if I can ask both of you, what is the state of the art of technologies in cell-based meat or plant and plant-based meat? Yeah. Bill, would you like to get us started? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe Andy, I'm going to back up for one second and I'm just going to introduce what Protein Industries Canada is because people might not, not know what it is sure. we do or who we are. So Protein Industries Canada, we are a not-for-profit corporation and uh, we're administering large scale science and innovation co-investments into technology projects to grow Canada's plant-based foods sector. And so we've got today a, um, an innovation portfolio of almost $400 million. We invest in very large scale science and innovation projects aimed at the development of 
uh, new ingredients from uh, Canadian-based crops. So uh, developing novel technologies for protein extraction, the creation of high protein concentrates and isolates, ingredients that can be utilized as platforms into the development of novel based food products. And so really interested in the evolution of this because the ingredients that we produce in Western Canada can serve as the feedstock into the development of plant based food. So today we have under management about 20 large scale science and innovation projects. We just announced a new one this morning if people are following the work of Protein Industries Canada. Uh, so really uh, driving at, at innovation in this space. And so, you know, the question around what is the state of innovation in terms of plant based foods, I think we're really at a tipping point. And so, you know, really interested in what XPRIZE is doing here in terms of whole muscle cuts and trying to mimic uh, more the texture and mouthfeel and flavor of, of meat substitutes. Because the state of innovation today, you know, we're really, uh, I think we've done a, a phenomenal job in Canada and globally around the area of texturized vegetable protein and the mimicking of ground, ground meat applications in things like extruded proteins. But uh, we're, we're just at a tipping point of this next piece of innovation, which this X Prize is focused on, which is utilizing these plant based ingredients, protein concentrates, and isolates in combination with other plant based ingredients derived from the starches and fibers of those crops as well to produce whole muscle cuts of meat. And so it's a really great time, I think, for the X Prize to launch into this space because we're, we're really getting close to the development of these whole, cut, whole muscle cuts. And I could talk about some of the specific innovations, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll stop there, Andy. Right, thanks, we'll say, maybe I am going too, too fast. Uh, so Ahmed, please, uh, what is uh, Silver Agriculture Canada? What is the mission? And what is the expedition uh, for Canada? Yeah, yeah sure thing. So like I mentioned, Stock Culture Canada, CEC for short, we're a non not-for-profit organization looking to advocate for the cell agriculture field across Canada. To that extent, we have two main, two main goals for our mission. One is to, in general, raise awareness of the cell agriculture field across the country. Compared to places like the UK and the US and most of Western Europe, um, cell agriculture is relatively unknown in Canada. So part of our mission is to help raise awareness of that field beyond, more beyond social media campaigns. We also do different, different um, educational projects with both youth, youth across the country, as well as through different institutions. Um, and last year, one of the projects CAC did was work with the Errol Institute at the University of Guelph to, um, raise, to, work, to help master students understand how cell agriculture could be part of our future food system and to explore how to integrate that into future food supply chains, for example. That's one side of the CAC mission. The other side is to work towards is, is to work and advocate for a fair and appropriate reg regulatory system for the cell agriculture field, in particular cell cultured meat in can Canada. When people talk about novel food technologies, particularly cell agriculture, one of the first questions they have is, is this safe? Who's going to regulate it? So, so it's important again to get that conversation started with the, with the appropriate regulatory officials to make sure that we can make sure that Canada can become a leader in this field. Right, so let's talk a little bit now about the technologies uh, behind each different approach. So what is the state of the art? So what are those companies that we can see of size using, applying in the entire supply chains? Because this is not only about the final approach, also there is a lot of machinery and technology that need to be developed to be able to uh, create this kind of new products. So how, what is the state, what, what is happening right now? Uh, about the knowledge, Bill, did you want to? Uh, so, Andy, are, are you asking about some of the novel technologies that are being developed on plant-based yes. foods? Yeah. Yes, novel technologies, uh, also uh, different mm -hmm. approach, with, you know, uh, the potential of fermentation now, all these right. kind of new discoveries. Uh, happening. Yeah, yeah. So even though we're focused on plant-based protein, I think what's interesting is maybe the convergence of technologies that I think is going to happen over the course of the next little while. And, and so that is, you know, it, it's one thing to take plant-based protein and make an extruded product that you can use in, in, in a ground meat application. It's quite another 
to uh, then take a convergence of technologies and work towards these whole muscle cuts. And so I think what's going to happen over the course of time is, a, is kind of a convergence of technologies where we've got things like uh, texturized vegetable protein, perhaps the uh, ideas around, uh, around 3D printing, uh, building a whole muscle cuts off of scaffolding that is made from uh, gelatin replacements or collagen replacements. So I think what we're really seeing is uh, and, and what, will, what will lead to products that are doing the best of mimicking whole cuts of meat is this convergence of technology. So utilizing uh, plant-based protein as the base substrate and then also fermentation technology to change texture and nutrition profiles, blending of proteins to make sure that we've got the right amino acid balance. So, you know, I, I think we're also on the verge of this convergence of technologies. And that's really the only way we're gonna get to what I would say is this concept of, of whole muscle cuts and evolving beyond where we are today, which is, you know, rudimentary technology around texturized vegetable protein. If I could just add on to that, Andy, on the cellular agriculture lens, um, similar to what Bill just mentioned, a lot of the focus right now is on the technologies in terms of how can we move from growing cells for meat or dairy application at the lab bench scale all the way to a, a pilot plant and then ultimately a commercial scale. What we're seeing right now is a lot of the earlier companies in, in the cell agriculture ecosystem had to do everything all in-house. That'd be what you, what you would call full stack companies trying to develop all the technologies by themselves. Now, a few years later, that, that no longer needs to be the case. We're seeing a lot more companies come out just looking to focus on some of the technical aspects of cell agriculture and cell cultured meat in particular. The idea of can we focus on using different plant-based ingredients to develop a cell culture media formulation, or can we develop cell lines to, for all these different companies, or even like the bioreactor technology even. There's a whole range of companies coming out right now. And one of, one of Canada's cell agriculture companies, Future Fields is actually helping lead the way with their platform for cell culture media formulations. Yes, so uh, what, Asati, what is the, you know, each time that we talk about cell-based uh, meat, we always have this uh, question of oh, what is the price? Uh, and we know that 10 years ago, the price pass was like kind of insane. Uh, so if you have you any idea where we are now, is something that is feasible, is something that, for example, in the startup or with five people can start to create a, a project yeah. around uh, cell-based meat? Yeah, you're right. So the whole I, this whole field of growing meat directly from cells got came to the public's eye back in 2013 when Professor Mark, Mark Posh showcased the first cell-grown burger in London, the cost of one of those burgers was over $300,000 for just one of those cell-grown burgers. And then let's move forward now. In December, 2020, Singapore made history by becoming the first country to give regulatory approval for the sale of cell-cultured meat. And the company behind that first prod product, he just sold one cell-cultured chicken nugget for $23. That's still quite expensive for one chicken nugget. But the idea from $300,000 and seven years later down to $23 for one piece, it, it, it shows great technical progress, but we obviously still have a while to go to get to price parity. That's great. Um, so just talking about the regulations, I know that the Cellular Agriculture Canada is working very hard to make this happen, to make uh, what happened in Singapore to happen in Canada as soon as possible. So what is the state right now of the regulations um, around cell-based meat? Yeah, sure thing. So uh, to, to, to address that from the beginning, Canada has a, is great because they have a very technically driven food reg regulating agencies and, and, and individuals behind them. Um, but when CEC first began, the, it was great to have conversations with regulators and the Canadian government right away to help because they were interested in understanding this field themselves and exploring how can we be at the forefront of this field. To, to that extent, CAC has had great working relationships with different regulators across the country. Back in, the, in September 2020, CAC published the first white paper on how a regulatory system could look like for cell cultured meat in Canada with direct input and feedback from Canadian regulatory officials. This is the first time anywhere around the world a nonprofit published a white paper looking at regulation for cell agriculture with direct government input. That's a big deal. And this shows how Canadian regulators are looking to be at the forefront of this. Um, similarly, back in March, CAC organized a regulatory panel event 
by different technical experts from the Canadian government highlighted the different steps that Canadian, that Canadian startups would need to do to get regulatory approval in Canada in terms of what kind of environmental um, aspects they need to look at, as well as other assessments from the novel food side as well. It really shows that the regulators in this country are being at the forefront and trying to get, <clears throat> get, get companies moving forward. Uh, how fast do you think that this will happen? So, as you know, the X5 feet and X billion is a four years long uh, competition. Do you think this will happen before the, the end of the competition or after the, the competition? Because something that can happen is that some, some projects can have a product to sell, but they don't have a market. Or maybe they need to move to, to Singapore. I don't know. Uh, so one of the things that that's an important point. That is, that is maybe me just that. pushing, pushing it a bit. Um, yeah, so when you look at the regulatory side for Canada, what, what the government officials shared during the last CAC conversations is they encourage all the different companies or scientists interested in soil agriculture in Canada to directly reach out to um, Health Canada and, and, and engage in pre-submission consultations with their team to help them understand what they're looking for to make sure that the conversation starts early on so there can be, be proper engagement from the very beginning. Right. Andy, I might I might just sure. uh, jump in because on on the regulatory question, you know what Amat is is talking about is also true for plant based foods, right? Like I don't I don't want people who are thinking about the competition to leave with the impression that there isn't regulatory requirements on the plant based food side. And I think this is a great competition to showcase the speed and pace of innovation that's going to happen in in both cellular agriculture, plant based technologies, fermentation technologies, and the evolution of food systems. And to use this and to use the members of the innovation community that's on today to really have pointed conversations with the regulators in Canada to make sure that our regulatory system is keeping up with the pace of innovation. And, and we have to use platforms like this, this to do that. And so you look at the pace of innovation that's happening in Singapore, it's because Singapore made a very, very pointed uh, decision to say, we're open for business for things like cellular agriculture because we need to change food systems in, in our country. I think we have to think about that in Canada. And so I would encourage anyone who's interested in this space to really have pointed conversations with the regulators about what needs to get done. So open to have that conversation with anyone because it's such an important piece around supporting innovation. Yes, I add think that is a, that. Sure. To add, on, to add on to that, what Bill just mentioned, this idea of innovation moving forward, I think something that'll be really interesting is future is the idea of that blended product like Bill mentioned, mm -hmm. plant-based proteins as well as cell-based one. That, that could be a fascinating way to move forward as well. Mm -hmm. yes, right now we, are, we, we, we can see a lot of uh, plant-based products uh, uh, in the supermarket. Uh, um, I imagine that is, we start to see more and more and more this kind of new so, uh, and we don't, I think just the imagination is the limit for what is possible with all this new science and, and technology. So we, we can say that Canada is one of the top countries in the, in the world with, uh, around knowledge uh, and talent. So uh, Bill, I, I know the protein industry in Canada have as a, a vision to, it, so it's looking to put Canada as a global leader in, in plant-based protein. Do you see, so are, are you seeing also Canada as one of the leaders in the alternative protein uh, scenario? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if, if I take a step back and think about what we're trying to do at Protein Industries Canada. So we're, we're sitting on, I was talking a little bit before about the scope and scale of Canadian agricultural production. And again, for those of you who aren't familiar, you know, Canada is the fifth largest agri-food economy in the world. We are, we are one of five jurisdictions globally that is a net exporter of food. We produce 90 million metric tons of annual crop production, at least half of which is exported. So we're a very, very important agriculture provider and food provider to the world. What we're trying to do at Protein Industries Canada, though, is take those raw commodities that we uh, or that we produce and not sell them as whole seed, but convert them into high value ingredients and high value food products. Uh, and for a couple of reasons, one is economic generation for the country, but the other is, you know, maybe a higher purpose, right? Thinking about uh, the challenges that global agri-food systems are placing, food security, climate change, sustainability, health. And so it, it's really important. And I think Canada actually has 
a bit of a, a responsibility on a global basis to think about what we can do to contribute to global food system redesign and uh, and what we can do to contribute to some of these things like global food security, human health and sustainability. So with that as the backdrop, I would say, Andy, yeah, we are really looking at Canada becoming a global hub for plant-based food innovation. I think the investments that we're making at Protein Industries Canada and thinking about you know, just in the course of 24 months that we've been around to build an innovation portfolio that reaches almost $400 million. We've, we've increased uh, a lot of international engagement into what it is that we're doing. Uh, other, other food economies around the world are waking up to the fact that Canada is sitting on, you know, tens of millions of metric tons of plant protein on an annual basis. If you really wanna be a global player in plant-based food, you have to think about Canada as a hub. And uh, so you, you, know, you put together uh, the whole picture, which is uh, large tracts of land uh, in, in, in Canada, millions and millions of acres of crop production, hundreds of thousands of innovative producers, a strong innovation economy, which is including our universities and our research institutions within the federal government, together with some really innovative food companies. And you've got uh, a real recipe for growth in plant-based foods. And we're getting recognized on the global stage as a, as a real hub for innovation that's happening in this space. Great. I have some questions here from the, from the chat. So Jennifer from Better Milk is asking, so what are the resources available for cell-based protein company at Protein Industries Canada? So basically the question is, there is some resource for cell-based uh, company at Protein Industries Canada? Um, sorry, Andy, you might have to repeat the question. Yes, uh, so Jennifer is asking, what are the resources available for cell-based protein companies at Protein Industries Canada? Right, right. So our, our mandate today is really focused on uh, plant-based protein. But uh, you know, if you think about cellular agriculture and the conversation that we were having about the convergence of technologies, I think we'd be interested in a conversation with someone interested in cell-based agriculture if they're working on a hybrid product, perhaps with a mixture of plant protein, or at, you know, you will need inputs into cellular-based agriculture in terms of you know protein sources or carbohydrate sources for the conversion of, of cellular agriculture. So again, our focus is largely based on plant protein, but uh, you know, collaborative R and D we might be interested in, or making connections with companies within our ecosystem. So yeah, I can have another question there. Is like. So, because using the name Protein Industries Canada is part of the core of the organization or the criteria of organization used to be around plant-based or is more the vision that you have is around protein. Yeah, so the, 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 the initial um, vision for us is around plant protein and the driver behind that is the resource that we have in annual sustainable crop production in Western Canada. You know, it's staggering the amount of crop production that we have and the economic opportunity that exists to convert that to ingredients and food products. And so our mandate is really focused on plant protein. But, you know, we're, we're a very young organization too, Andy, I would say, and we've got a lot of evolving and thinking to do. And so as we evolve, uh, we're seeking another funding mandate from the government of Canada. And, and I think one of the interesting things we'll be exploring is this convergence of technologies. But I think we will always be rooted in, uh, in plant-based protein. Yeah, we have another question Hi. here from, sorry, oh my, go ahead. I just want to add on to that, that the work that Protein Industries Canada and Build does is, is, is a model for what cell agriculture Canada imagines we can do one day for the widest cell agriculture ecosystem as well. Mm -hmm. Protein Industries Canada has brought together both public and private sectors to work together to help develop a plant-based protein ecosystem around the country. And, and ultimately we aim to create a very similar pro system for cell agriculture. Hmm. Yes, I hope that also this space uh, helped to, to, to figure out what are those conversions between these two different organizations, different uh, technologies, and to see all this blend of uh, approach to create the future of protein. There is another question from Rebecca. So this is for Bill. When it comes to plant protein, plant-based proteins, what do you think are the current pitfalls with existing and popular pros that may be soy or pea based. In your opinion, where can plant-based 
plant-based proteins really improve? Yeah, I, I think, uh, thanks for the question, Rebecca. I think it's, um, it's uh, relatively simple, but hard to do, right? And it's taste, texture, and price, right? So consumers at the end of the day want, um, want products that taste good. They, we need to achieve price parity with meat and, and we need to get the texture right. And so those are three, I would say, technological challenges that we have to overcome in order for us to really achieve the potential that we can in plant-based foods. So if you're thinking about, about projects and that type of stuff, this is what we hear very consistently from consumer packaged goods companies and from consumers who are trying these products. You know, it, we're, we're in an era today where where dozens of, of plant-based products are being launched into the marketplace on a on an almost daily basis, some of them taste really bad, right? We we gotta we gotta fix that. Um, P sometimes you know we 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 funded some R and D work around deflavoring P so that we can add a, a neutral flavor product. So taste, texture, price those those are the three areas that really need to uh, focus. Great, I think we are. Uh, what is the uh, reason? Well, here, uh, use the last word, uh, so that you are meant what, so how uh, people can know more about Cellular Agriculture Canada, what should be the call to action for this X-Price thing, so in the context of X-Price, this X-Price is a great opportunity for us to move forward, uh, I think it's proteins. So how those teams and projects can be in contact on, with the, the community of Cellular Agriculture Canada, and same thing for you, Bill, what could be the call to action? Yeah, sure. Sure. So to, to start, it's really great that District 3 and XPRIZE are putting together this event to help encourage Canadians to get involved in the XPRIZE to help feed the next billion. If you're watching this and you're, I, I encourage you to get started and, and, and see how you can explore, continue to help Canada become a leader in the food, food space. One, one of the really interesting parts about the XPRIZE is while I'm here talking about cellular agriculture and trying to advocate to grow that ecosystem in Canada and Bill and Protein Industries Canada is focusing on the plant-based side. The XPRIZE isn't very explicit on that they want plant-based or cell-based. They're open to the idea of anything in the middle, the hybrid, the blend or the hybridization of the two fields to ultimately come up with a sustainable solution to feed our, feed our next billion people. Um, so if you're looking into that, definitely encourage you to get involved. If you want to learn more about Cell Agriculture Canada and the work that we do, our white papers or other resources, you can visit cellag.ca that's our website. We are active on social media as well. And we have a contact information box on that. If you want to reach out to me personally, my email address is Ahmed at cell.ag. Um, thanks for having me again, Andy. This was a, this was a great event. Thank you. David? Yeah, just just thanks and thanks to X Prize uh, for recognizing that this is uh, this is an important piece moving forward in global agri food systems. And again, you know, District Three, thank you for putting this on and having us interested to talk to anybody about this. I posted the info at Protein Industries Canada uh, in the chat, and uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of us, we're 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 highly accessible and look forward to the teams that emerge out of Canada.